Welcome to Port Adriano Marina in Mallorca. The sun is just coming up behind me. It's very early in the morning, and that is because we have a very special treat in store for you today. Now, regular viewers of this channel might remember that back in January at the Dusseldorf show, I did a tour of a boat that I described as Europe's coolest superboat. And today we have the opportunity to experience just that out on the water. And here she is. This is the Frauscher Demon 1414. I think from the looks alone, you can see just how special she is. And today we're gonna to take her out on the water, give her a full test, show you everything that she can do. And not just that, we also have the privilege of the man himself on board. We have Stefan Frauscher, the owner of the company, who is gonna accompany us on the sea trial and tell us all about his boat and show us what it can do. So let's not waste any more time. Let's jump on board and get going. So Stefan, tell me a little bit about the company. When did it mm -hmm. start? The company started in 1927. My grandfather uh, founded it. And yeah, afterwards it was my father and my uncle. And now it's me and my brother mm -hmm. running the company in Austria. So it's and an Austrian company. It's an Austrian company. Based yeah. on the lakes there Based then? on the lake, yeah, right. based on the lake. And uh, we are running different companies also at the sea. One here in uh, Mallorca, uh, one in the south of France, and also one in Miami. Fantastic. And what makes your boats so different and so special? Uh, I um, mainly mainly three I think three points. Uh, one is the design. Yeah. It's a really clean and uh, uh, design uh, uh, which is different to everything else which is on the market. Then the next thing is I think uh, you will see uh, innovation is in every uh, of our in each of our products. And uh, then uh, with Frauscher you find also this family spirit. This is very important to us and it is inside the company how we treat our uh, employees but also uh, a buyer of a Frauscher enters the Frauscher family and, uh, and we are not a Chinese or a, a sure. big company, it's just still family. And who designs the boats then? We work with different designers. Uh, so we have a development department in the, in the shipyard but we use always uh, different designers. This one was Mr. from the Demon was Mr. Kiske, uh, which is also big in uh, the car industry, for example. Okay, fantastic. And I can see that you're using the joystick drive. So yes, tell we, us a little bit about... We, we are using the joystick drive here, especially in the harbor. Uh, the wind throws us uh, towards the, the other, so it's easy to maneuver. Uh, we are using two stern drives here, D6 from Volvo, uh, but uh, the just joystick just works perfectly. Yeah. These, uh, uh, you could also have a, a TPS system where it just, uh, uh, where it just stay on the point you define. Yeah. Uh, also, this would be possible. Here we just have uh, the normal joystick, right. but uh, you see, uh, just can uh, to to turn turn in the harbor uh, like I do now. It's just doing by by using the the joystick. Here. Sure. So. Even though it looks like it's doing a million miles an hour while it's barely moving, it, 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 are they designed to be very user-friendly and... Yes, yeah. this, is the, this is one also uh, of these keys. We, we, we want our clients to, 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 to ride their boats themselves, to sail their, yeah. themselves, so without the captain and anything. So everything must be very easy to handle, uh, safe, but also still having this sport boat feeling on water and, uh, and not uh, feeling like being in a caravan. Brilliant, let's get out there let's and experience it. We've come out to see, and now we've got an opportunity to see what the Demon is all about. So we've got the twin Volvo 440 horsepower D6 engines on stern drives. We've got the joystick control for maneuvering around in the port, and I've had a bit of a play with that, and it takes a little bit of getting used to, but it is very, very handy because you can literally just put it where you want, move it exactly how you want it, and not have to worry about which engine is gear or where your steering is pointing. But now we've put it back to the throttle so that we can enjoy the full effect of that hull and those two powerful engines. So let's nudge it into gear. We've got it on synchronized 
gear, gear lever, so rather than using both throttles, we synchronize them on the one so that we get exactly the same performance from both engines. So we're just tootling along at 500 RPM, and at this speed, we're burning 3.2 liters an hour. But first of all, let's show you what it'll do in an acceleration run. So we've also got automatic trim on the engines, which is another handy feature. So again, the actual stern drives, it will take care of that. They've all been set to work out exactly what the most efficient running speed is. So I don't even need to bother about that. Right, let's go all the way. And that's the superchargers kicking in, and then the turbochargers. Really strong acceleration straight away. We're up to 24 knots now. 29 knots, 30. Going all the way. 35, 36, 38. And we're just beginning to slow down around about 39 knots at 170 litres an hour. So that just gives you a little bit of an idea of the straight line performance. We've got really solid acceleration from first the supercharger and then the turbocharger, and then it takes it up to about 39 knots, probably do about 40 knots if the hull was a little bit cleaner. We've got a tiny little bit of fur on the drives in the hull, so it probably takes a knot off or so but you can see good, solid performance. And what you do notice is we've got these bolster seats and you can either have them up like this or tucked down so you can get right down behind this plexiglass screen. There is a little bit of distortion through the screen simply because of the very steep angle and that's all part of the styling, but you do get nice protection when you're sat down and also really comfortable bolstered seats. Or you can flip this up and then you get better vision over the top down that lovely long foredeck which really does look stunning and you get a better view but you do then get some of the wind coming into your face but frankly when you're out in Mallorca on a beautiful day like this what's not to like about that so now let's just take it to a sort of comfortable 25 knots and see what the handling is like see how well it turns how quickly how responsive it is and hopefully my cameraman here will be able to hang on well enough for that. So we'll wind it up again. We're now doing 18. So just for accuracy's sake, if we take it up to exactly 25 knots, so there we go, it's about 2,800 RPM. We're doing 25 knots and burning 87 liters per hour. And that is for both engines, that's not per engine, that is just for both engines. So, two, just over two turns lock to lock. And as you can see, nice responsive steering. It's a fraction of a delay because it's quite a long boat, it's 46 feet. Let's put it into a full lock turn and see how quickly it goes round. So there we go, into a full lock turn. There's a nice bit of lean. We're still doing 2,800 RPM. Speeds come down a little bit from 25 to 22 knots. But good, grippy hull. There's absolutely no sign of slip at all at this speed. And there we are, we're just coming round to complete the turn. It's probably about five boat lengths, I would say. So it's not like a really tiny little agile boat. It is a big cruising boat, but nice grippy hull. Let's try it a bit quicker. Go all the way up. Okay, and now we're gonna turn to starboard. We're gonna go turn around to starboard. Look at that. Tracks work. I'm not sure how much of that you can hear because there's so much wind noise coming straight into your face. 
that it's hard to actually talk over it or know what the microphone is picking up. But really what I wanted to demonstrate was that you can do a full speed flat out turn and it will lose, it, scrub off some of the speed. It takes it down to about 32, 33 knots. But what it does feel is very secure and very grippy. Now, the other thing that I've noticed, I've had a chance now to drive both boats. And even though it's exactly the same hull and exactly the same engines, they do feel surprisingly different. And part of that, I think, is the driving position on this boat, the, the, de the demon rather than demon air with a closed bow forward. You've got this very long foredeck and you're sat quite a long way back. And you're quite aware of having all that boat in front of you. And the other thing is that because you've got a whole cabin down below, and this is in fact a, an owner's boat, so it has got all his kit on board, you just notice a little bit more noise coming down from down below. It acts a little bit like a drum. So whether that's the water slapping on the hull or just the kit that's down there, you're a bit more aware of it, particularly in a bigger sea. Whereas on the open boat, it somehow feels it's a little bit lighter. So that might explain a bit of it. It's a bit quicker and it feels somehow a bit more agile and responsive and you're less aware of the sound of the water on the hull. So even though nominally they're exactly the same, they do feel a little bit different. And we have taken it out in some slightly lumpier seas. It was really quite rough earlier on. And it's noticeable you do get a very nice dry ride. If you do land on one of the chines, you're a bit more aware of it, particularly on this boat where you can sort of hear and see and feel it a little bit more. But it's very capable. It didn't feel remotely threatening or uncomfortable. It just cut through it very nicely, maintaining a nice dry ride. So interesting how different two visually very similar and certainly in terms of the hull design, exactly the same, but just how different they can feel. Really informative experience. So while we're coming into port, I thought I'd just do you a quick reminder of how this boat all fits together and the various different features on it. So you can see we've got a lovely small bathing platform at the stern. We've got a big sun pad here and under here is where the tender is stored. So there is uh, a garage under there as well as access to the engines. And whilst we're over here, you can see we've got controls for the bathing ladder. It's an electric bathing ladder that goes in and out. The speakers absolutely everywhere on board this boat and I'll show you a few of those as we go. But you've got a shower in there and then you've got access either side of this sun bed. You can see both sides We've also got these really handy fender lockers, so really big deep fender bins. You can get four each side, so you've got them over there and exactly the same over on this side. So really important on a boat like this, the last thing you want are massive fenders that you can't store anywhere. So it's great to have those conveniently at the stern exactly where you need them. We've got access under here, that's the shore power lead. Put that away. We've got shore power on that side. And then over on this side, you can see that's where the cable goes in. And another locker there, really handy for, in this case, they've got the sort of fins, diving fins and wet shoes. Lovely cockpit area here. You can see there's a unusual sort of triangular table that folds out on both sides to create a big, cockpit seating area and you can sit and have supper there, lunch, whatever. We've got access under the deck here. Again, this is for quick access to the engine room. If you need to, you can dive down there, but you can just see the front of the tender peeking out. Got more little lockers underneath here, storing lines and things. Also under all these seats, really conveniently you just have to lift those up there's no having to pop cushions on and off you've got a nice deep fender locker oh sorry storage locker on both sides for shoes and things you can see it's already hinged with a sprung hinge exactly the same over on that side and then a big wet bar area here really chunky grp top to it with stainless steel on the underneath so you can cook at your grill and any cooking fat or anything won't stain any of the GRP because we've got the stainless steel. A little sink here. There's an ice maker there. You can see all the ice already loading in there. And on this side, there is another locker for the trash. 
Oh, we're missing something here. Ah, oh, there's another. Look at that. That's why we have Stefan on board to show us all these clever little tricks. Look at that. Really lovely little storage area for your glasses. Very smart. And then another fridge under the helm. Is that? Oh, there we go. Draw fridge. Well stocked, I'm pleased to see. And then also, again, we found this really handy. We've got a couple of glove boxes either side of the helm, which is so useful for your phones and sunglasses and other bits and pieces. Look, you can see that we've stored the handheld VHF. Really nice, clean helm layout. You've got the one chart plotter directly ahead of the wheel and then traditional analog dials so you can keep an eye on engine revs and temperatures, trim gauge, everything you need. We've already talked about the uh, joystick. And then what have we got here? Uh, to put the anchor on, you don't have to leave your cockpit. Everything works. Uh, so you can do uh, everything. everything. Oh, hang on a second. I think I might need to go and have a look at this. Do you just want to hold for a minute and then I can show it yes. in action? Now, one thing that does take a little bit getting used to are these side decks. You can see there's no guardrails on it. You can order guardrails if you want, but it does rather spoil the styling. And it just takes a little bit of getting used to because you have to step up. You can have a steadying hand on the windscreen here. And then the little tow rails either side, just giving a little bit of comfort. But apparently you do very quickly get used to it. But this is what I wanted to show you. You can see under here, is the anchor system. It's absolutely huge. Just give you an idea of the scale of that. With my hand next to that, it looks tiny. But this massive arm swings out on a hinge, all automatically. And that's because, A, you don't want the anchor to be exposed right at the bow. It, again spoils the very clean lines but also because you've got that very vertical bow you need the anchor to be quite a long way forward so that when it drops it's not going to foul the stem of the boat itself and look at that that's rather clever so even as the hatch comes down you can see there's a little hinged mini hatch at the front of it so the hatch itself can close and then you've got the anchor all in position ready to drop down into the water. We're not going to do it here because we're not in an anchorage, but I just wanted to show you how that all works. Very neat. And of course, all the cleats are pop-up cleats. So again, they all push back down into position. And you can see all the way along, there's lots of little eyelets for tying your fenders on. So you don't need the guardrails. You've got enough of these eyelets all the way around to tie the fenders off. But as I said, it does just take a little bit of getting used to, to have a completely unprotected foredeck. Again, it's largely a perception thing. It just feels odd if you're used to having rails there. But actually, they are nice wide side decks. And with a steadying hand on the windscreen, it's really easy enough to come back down. And then if we drop down into the accommodation, you can see that's another thing you just need to keep a little bit of an eye on because it is a bit of a drop off down there. Again, you just get used to your own boat and know it's there. And most of the time you're coming to and from the helm on this side. But drop down into the cabin and this always blows me away just how much room there is down here. Obviously you, use, you lose the open seating area of the Demon Air, but what you get in return is a lovely bright cabin, really nicely lit as well, both in terms of natural lighting from these three overhead hatches and these LED strip lights. It's a really cool effect. So nice and sheltered down here. There's a big dining area that also drops down so you can make that up into an extra double bed in the forward section there. We've got a big TV on the bulkhead on this side and then a galley area over here. So as well as having that wet bar out in the cockpit, you've got a decent galley with another pull-out fridge there. Lots of storage underneath and overhead. So there is plenty of storage. You've got a two-hob grill. 
And then, even more surprisingly, behind this door, there's a really big day head. It's actually more than a day head, it's a proper bathroom. So you can see it is effectively a, a, a wet room with a slatted teak floor to let the water drain away. There's not a separate curtain or screen there for the shower, but it's so big that it's, you're really not going to get too much water coming out from the shower into the loo and sink area, which is over on this side, simply because it's big enough for that not to be a problem. But really nice to have a big day head slash bathroom on a boat of this size. And then behind this other door, there is the main cabin, which again, put the lights on, actually a very decent space. It's a big double bed down there, at least king size, a couple of hatches overhead giving you a little bit of air and natural light. But actually, it's pretty good headroom down here. I can easily sit on the bed, no problem at all, plenty of clearance. Lots of covered space all around, you can see surrounding the bed on both sides. Nicely underlit. Quick look, you see huge big locker in there. Look at that. So there we go. It may be an outrageously cool sports boat, but it's also a surprisingly usable one. So another neat thing about the cockpit of this Demon is the way that the bimini can cover the whole thing. So if you look, we just lifted up these two hatches and then all the way around here is a big bimini cover that comes all the way over. Let me just move out the way, I'm in the way now. And you can see in a matter of seconds, we've got the whole cockpit very nicely shaded. And look, that is a full-length bimini providing shade all the way over this aft section. It's like depending where the sun is, you can even get shade at the helm. But with a, just a few seconds, a couple of tightening of the straps, and there we've got a really secure bimini shade. And that's just to show you what the bimini looks like from outside. You can see it's covering the central part of the cockpit. There is, in fact, a second extension that comes out over the sunbathing area if you want it. And then also, I showed you that bimini poles at the front. You can also erect one there. So effectively, you've got biminis all around the boat. That's obviously only for the open boat, not for this particular one. And there are the two boats side by side. This is the Demon Air that we were on earlier. And that is the standard Demon. Subtle difference, but very different character. I started off this review by describing the Frauscher Demon as Europe's coolest superboat. And now we've been out and driven it on the sea, I think we can qualify that a little bit more. Yes, it's undoubtedly one of the coolest boats afloat. It looks amazing and it feels amazing. Is it a superboat in terms of performance and handling? Well, that depends. You can put huge petrol engines in and they have done that for one customer and it will do 70 knots. Would you want to? I don't think so. For me, this is a much more usable boat. You've got standard Volvo diesel stern drives. It's easier to look after. It's easier to handle. It's fast enough for anything you really want because frankly, over 40 knots tends to get a bit uncomfortable and a bit scary. But also you've got the ease of joystick control. You've got fuel efficiency and easy maintenance. Now, Frauscher describes himself as engineers of emotion. And to me, I think that sums it up perfectly. It clearly feels like a boat that has been designed and built with passion. And from a point of view of the owner, when you drive it, you feel that too. It's a boat that really tugs at the heartstrings. So I hope you've enjoyed this sea trial of the Frauscher Demon. Do please let me know what you think of it in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and I'll look forward to seeing you on our next test.